ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily the praise belongs to Allah we praise him seek his assistance and forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds Whoever Allah guides there is no one that can lead him astray and whoever Allah leads astray there is no one that can guide him I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and that he has no partners or associates and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. This evening, bi-idhni lahi ta'ala, this is our fifth session and tonight we want to talk about two topics that the Shaykh has mentioned uh, in our book Ta'zeem As-Salah Ta'zeem As-Salah yani the acknowledgement Acknowledging, recognizing the importance, the lofty, high status or station of the salah in the life of a Muslim. Yani recognizing, acknowledging, exalting, extolling, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this act of worship that is exclusively for Him alone. Uh, the Shaykh Abdul Razak, the son of Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Al Abad Al Badr, Hafidahumullah, may Allah protect and preserve both of them. As we mentioned previously, has dealt with a number of topics under this title of Ta'zeem As Salat. Recognizing, acknowledging the great importance of this act of worship, which is the most important obligation upon a Muslim. After the Shahadatain. And after entering Islam by acknowledging, recognizing, and accepting the great truth and reality that there is nothing which deserves to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, there is no other duty that Allah has placed upon the believers after that that is greater than as salah. Indeed, it is of the utmost importance. The topics that we want to talk about tonight is the obligation. After establishing the prayer in your individual personal life, the obligation of attending to your family. And secondly, the importance of performing the prayer and the fulfillment of the establishment of salah includes a number of matters from amongst them. From amongst them is performing the prayer in its fixed time. But before we go to the topic for tonight, <coughs> we want to look at the questions from the study guide from last week. Study guide from lecture number four. And we have ten questions. Some of them, inshallah, we're going to just answer briefly and try to go through them as quickly as possible. The first question, define the expression, mawqifani azimani. Yani this is an Arabic expression, mawqifani azimani. What does this mean? Yani what is, how do we translate this? What does this mean to a person who doesn't know anything about Arabic? What, do, what, what does this mean now? Two important situations. And standing, or in, he said, in standing, in standing. Okay, anybody else? Good. Now, Rashid. Two great stations. Two great stations. Anybody else? I mean, there are a lot of words that could be used to describe this expression, but I mean, that's the essence of it. Yani, that these are any two situations, two circumstances, two places of standing or stopping that are very, yani, important, significant, great. Yani, because a lot, because the Sheikh he has described it. And he has described it with the word Azim. And this word Azim has a lot of meanings. We know that it means grand, it means great, it means magnificent, it means significant, it means immense. It has a lot of meanings. Lofty, sublime, and so on. So it's hard to define it. But we know that these are two stations, two places of standing that are very, very important. The second question, mention the two situations that this expression refers to. What are the two situations that this expression refers to? Naam, Ibrahim. Uh, standing in Salah and standing in Salah. The standing in Salah 
Yani the standing that takes place every day in the life of a Muslim, five times a day, as Allah has made obligatory upon us the prayers five times a day, that standing that takes place five times a day every day in the life of a Muslim, and the second situation, or the second standing, is the standing on the day when we will meet our Rabb. The day of standing, Yawm Qiyamah. Now, this is what this, this is what the Shaykh is referring to, these two standings, these two situations or circumstances. The third question, explain the relationship between these two situations and how one of them will affect the other. Naam, uh, Naam, Ahmed. Now, yani the second standing is directly tied to, related to, based upon the condition of the person in the first standing. Yani the first standing in, in the daily salah, if a person does it well, does it sincerely for the sake of Allah, performs all of what is required from him to do in that situation, then they will be successful. They will find salvation and success and a good ending in the next standing. It will be made easy for them. And likewise the opposite. Yani if, they, if they don't perform the salah, the daily pra- uh, five obligatory prayers well, if they don't fulfill that obligation properly, thoroughly, correctly, then they will, be, they will find f- destruction and loss in the next standing as a result of that. Again, and we don't want to do the whole class over again, but this is a critical, critical point. That, the, that it's in your hands. And to a great extent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the human being limited free will. He has shown us the right way, and then He has told us, this is what you should do if you want to be successful. If you do it, inshallah, you will be successful. And if you do it sincerely for the sake of Allah, in the way that Allah has prescribed it, you will find success. And if you don't, then what do you expect? If you expect anything except destruction and loss, you are in self-delusion. A lot of people are in delusion. Wallahi, a lot of Muslims are in delusion. Forget about the Christians. A man came to my neighbor and knocked on the door. A man and a lady started giving them dawah. I didn't want to open my door for them, but I just wanted to punish them back for what they did to the other, other people. So I opened the door. And the first thing they said, do you know about Jehovah's Witnesses? I said, yeah, I know all about them. Do you know anything about Islam? <laughs> started scratching his head. Uh, I need to be honest. No, I don't. I said, let me tell you about Islam. Then they just ran away after that. I mean, they, they didn't want to stay around. They didn't want to stay around. These people are lost. But some of the Muslims are also lost. Wallahi, some of the Muslims are also lost. If a person is not complying with what Allah has legislated and revealed, if they are not following the way of the Prophet wasallam, with sincere intention and right action, they are also lost. They are also lost. Some people, their names are Muslim, and Wallahi, they are mushriks. Naam. I know that sounds a little heavy, right? Naam. That is in the Quran. Tayyip, question number four. Mention three legal categories of the actions of salah that one must give the utmost care to. Yani three legal expressions that the Shaykh mentioned that he keeps repeating again and again and again that we have to give care and attention to. Give, anybody in the back? Now I'm uh, Saif. Uh, the shurut. Uh, the the, the shurut, the preconditions of salah. Like you have to be in a state of purification, time for the salah covering and so on. Now. Give me another one. Okay, go ahead. The arkan, the arkan, the essential pillars of the side. Those things which, if you leave one of them out, the prayer became invalid. This is critical that a person know this, do it, and do it properly. And the third one, Nam, Abu Jamil, wajibat, the obligatory duties, obligatory duties. And there's a difference. This is not a fit class, but in any case, yani, Nam, just be aware that these are important matters, and there are other important matters. There's no doubt about it. The other important matters. But the Shaykh mentioned them again and again and again, so it's important that we understand what these things are. An obligatory duty, if a person unintentionally, forgetfully, leaves it out, they can make up for it. They can make up for it by what? That's the sign. Now, frustrations of forgetfulness. Question number five, what is the first? This is a one word answer. What is the first deed or action for which people will be called to account on Yawm Qiyamah? Naam, Abdurrahman. As-salat. The first thing that a person is going to be called to account from their deeds in Yom Qiyamah is their salat. First thing, before anything else. So this is the, shows the importance of this matter. 
I mean, what could be more important than that? This is the first thing Allah will call you to account for. Question number six. What will be the result of a person's proper, correct fulfillment of this obligation or one's failure to do so? What will be the result? Naam, Adam. Naam, if it's correct, he will be successful and have salvation and safety. If it is correct, uh huh. Naam. Failure, he will be unsuccessful, loss, destruction. If a person doesn't fulfill this obligation properly with all that it requires, including intention, including khushu'a, including the movements and positions of the prayer, what you say in the prayer, all of that is very, very important. And all of that is included. And the seventh question, seventh question number seven, memorize the hadith which is a delil or proof for the answers to questions number five and six above. The hadith, that's a delil for this. Now, uh, uh, Abdullah, we didn't call him Abdullah yet. <laughs> the hadith of Abdul bin Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhumah. Okay, that's one of them. That the salat will be a light and a proof and a salvation. But we want the hadith that indicates the answer to question 5 and 6 that the first thing that a person will be called to account for will be salat. The first thing. Now. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أول إن أول ما يحاسب به العبد يوم القيامة من عمله صلاته صلاته فإن صلحت فقد أفلح وأنجح فإن فسدت فقد خاب وخسر Naam, Jayil. Meaning, the first thing, the, indeed the first thing that the abd, the worship of Allah, will be called to account for in Yawm al from their deeds is his salat or her salat. And if it is, yani, correct, salahat, is performed well and properly, thoroughly, then, فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ And they will be successful, they will be saved, they will meet a good end. Naam. And otherwise, if it's fasadat, if it's corrupted and defective and not properly performed, فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَصِرَ This is really strong language. خَابَ وَخَصِرَ It will be destroyed. خَصِرَ It will be a lost. Loss. Loss. A loser. Naam. Question number eight. Memorize the hadith of Bushra, yani the good news for those of the Muslim Ummah who are obedient, obedient to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam, Abu Jamil. Somebody uh, give me the translation of this hadith. Naam, uh, Isa. Uh, all of my ummah will enter Jannah except those who disobey me. Except those who refuse. Every one of my ummah will enter Jannah except those who refuse. Naam, then they said, Ya Rasulullah. Who, who are those who refuse? Will anybody refuse the Jannah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? Whoever obeys me, then he will enter Jannah. Whoever disobeys me, then he has refused. Naam. Whoever obeys me, he will enter the Jannah. Simple as that. And whoever disobeys me, then that is the one who refuses, who has refused. They have refused to enter the Jannah. Naam. And the, sec- the, the ninth question, who are those who refuse to enter the Jannah as narrated by Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu reported by Al-Bukhari? Who are they? Yani, I, I want somebody to think about this answer. Okay, we just heard the hadith, right? So who are they? Those who have refused to enter the Jannah. Who are they? What does this mean? Naam. Uh, what's your name, Akhi? Muhammad. Huh? Muhammad. Muhammad. Naam. Who are, who are those who refused to enter Jannah? Those who disobeyed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Type, somebody give me a little bit further. Now, Musa. Those who didn't perform salat correctly, that's from it. Now, for sure. Now, those who do bid'ah. Now, but who else? I mean, does this word, does it only mean those who didn't perform salat? What does it mean? Those who 
حدود بده نم You said who are displeased? Disbelievers. Oh, the disbelievers. Yeah. Nam. Okay, indeed, the disbelievers for sure. Like first and foremost, <laughs> everyone knows he refused. Yeah. Now, it, but from, we're talking about the Prophet saw something. He's talking about his ummah. Okay, it could be the ummah has two meanings here. Okay, so we could, and it, it appears as though he's talking about the ummah of Ijab. But in any case, who else? What are, what kind of things are we talking about here? Those who re, who who disobey the Prophet and what? Disobey the Prophet, not just huh? In the Sharia, in the legal matters, in the aqidah, the ibadah, the manners, in character, in all of that, who disobeyed the Prophet ﷺ. It's not in one area they disobeyed him. Rather, some people disobeyed, they rejected the aqidah of the Prophet ﷺ. Some people rejected the ibadah of the Prophet ﷺ. They worship, they pray the way they want to pray. The Prophet ﷺ said, pray as you see me praying. Some people said, no, we pray the way we want to pray. But lies everywhere, people praying the way they want to pray. They fast the way they want to fast. They make hajj the way they want to make hajj. They don't care about the sunnah. They have been disobedient in ibadah, in aqidah, in manners. In Some people, they have no Islamic manners. They don't have any character. They're not truthful. They're not honest. Sheikh, Sheikh Sali Suhaimi, Hafidhullah, may Allah protect and preserve him. Yesterday he gave a speech in, in England. And subhanAllah, you have to hear it, what he said. He said, some of these people are just outright liars. But they are thiqa in some, with some of the mashayikh. The mashayikh don't know them. They think these people are trustworthy. And they are outright liars. He said, we went to Turkey and Albania <laughs> two weeks ago. And one guy there, who was a failed student, who dropped out because he couldn't do the work, he was spreading the story that the sheikh, when he was coming to visit the, their country, that one of the other sheikhs called him and told him, don't go, those people are upon innovation. And the sheikh told the other sheikh, Sheikh Salih Sahimi told the other sheikh, no, I'm going anyway, even if they're upon innovation. I'll correct them or rectify their situation. And went on. The Sheikh said, this, this story is completely false. The general meaning of it, as well as every detail of it, never happened. He said, the Sheikh, I know the Sheikh, I love him for the sake of Allah, but I haven't seen him, I haven't met him, I haven't heard his voice, nor has he heard my voice in six months. And this guy is going around telling people this. And he said, after that, he stuck with some of the people. So even after that, people will still believe him, even though he's an outright liar. These are the people that we are dealing with. They are saying who is Salafi, who is not Salafi, who is on the Sunnah, who is not on the Sunnah. Some of these people are just liars. Kedzaboon. Slanderers. Backbiters. Evil people, Akhi. But they are thiqa and the Sheikh believes them. And he goes and tells the Sheikh some lie. And then the Sheikh says, makes a statement based on his, a liar's statement. This is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Disobedience to the Prophet ﷺ is disobeying him in anything. Whether it is in worship, aqidah, character, man, all of that. We're required to follow the Prophet wasallam in all of it. The last question, how long will the standing be on Yawm Qiyamah? And how long will it be for the true believers? In brief, Naam, uh, Tayyip, Ahmed. Naam, 50,000 years. That's how long it will be one day. One day. That will be the length of 50,000 years. But for the believers, Naam. Now, for the believers, like the time between Dhuha and Asr. This is a favor from Allah. Now, in any case, um, I, I failed to mention, the Shaykh, he didn't mention it, and I also failed to make a note of it, that the ayat that he's referring to is in Surah Al-Ma'arij, the 70th Surah, specifically the fourth ayat, but yani the ayat from 1 through 7, chapter 70, ayat 1 through 70, Yani, the Shaykh is referring to here, yani, about the Yawm Qiyamah. And this is the opinion of Abd ibn Abbas, Abd ibn Umar, and other scholars from amongst the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, and the Imams of the Sunnah. That this ayat, 50,000 years, refers to Yawm Qiyamah. That that's how long it will be on the disbelievers. As far as the believers, Allah will lighten it and make it easy. <coughs> For the believers. Okay. Allahumma sta'an. Tayyip. Chapter 5 وَأَمُرْ أَحْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ And command, enjoin upon your family the salat. The Shaykh says أَمْرٌ إِلَهِيٌّ كَرِيمٌ وَتَوْجِيحٌ رَبَّانِيٌّ عَظِيمٌ أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ فِيهِ مُفَرِّتٌ وَلَهُ مُدَيْعٌ أَلَا وَهُوَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى فِي آخِرِ سُرَةُ الطَّهَى وَأَمُرْ أَحْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ 
واصطبر عليها لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبة للتقوى يعني the sheikh he begins this chapter saying that this is a command that a divine a noble divine command يعني instruction guidance رباني from the رب العالمين that is عظيم a tremendous يعني guidance instruction that most of the people have fallen short in it most of the people have wasted it is it not يعني I mean he means to say it is the saying of Allah تبارك وتعالى in the end of Surah Tata the meaning of which is and command or enjoin upon your family the salah command your family to perform the salah واستبر عليها and you yourself be patient يعني be steadfast in what? in performing the salah yourself يعني enjoin upon your family the salah and also you because there is difficulty involved in this performance of salah it's five times a day it requires so much attention focus sincerity khushur correct performance reflection on what you're saying this is a struggle واستبر عليها Enjoin upon your family the salah and you also be patient in the fulfillment of this obligatory duty. Allah says, we are not asking you for sustenance. Rather, we provide you with sustenance and the good end, the praiseworthy end, yani the jannah, is for the people of taqwa who fulfill Allah's commands and avoid His prohibitions. <coughs> Naam. Subhanallah. Uh, this is Surah Taha, 20th Surah, 132nd Ayat. And some of the scholars of Tafsir said this, the meaning of this is to save your family. Command them with Salat as a means of salvation to save them from the punishment of Allah. How do you save them from punishment of Allah? By establishing the Salat. And then you yourself must be patient in performing it, as Ibn Kathir says. You yourself must also be patient in performing it. And he said, this is like the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place in the Quran, Ya yulidina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save, or oh you believe, save <coughs> yourselves and your family from yani, the fire. <coughs> Perform the prayer yourself and also enjoin it upon your family members. After this, the Shaykh says, This is a command from Allah Jalla fi alahu, li nabihi, mustafahu, Muhammadin abdi abdillah, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. Wa ma amar Allah Jalla wa ala bihi nabiyahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fahu amrun li ummatihi, ma lam yakum dalilun ala taqsisi dhalika, wa la muqassisa li hadha bi ittifaq ahl al Yani, this is a command from Allah, the Majestic, the Most High. To his prophet, his chosen one, that is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, salawatullah wa salam alayhi. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded his prophet with it, this is a qaida rule. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded his prophet with, then it is a command for his ummah. As long as there is no proof, which indicates that it is especially and particularly for the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. And as long as there is no proof that shows that this command to the Prophet ﷺ is exclusively for him, it's not for the rest of the Ummah. In the absence of such a proof, then a command to the Prophet ﷺ is a command for the rest of the Ummah. Even those in the singular, Allah is ordering the Prophet, وَأَمُرْ أَحْلَكَ يعني command your family. But the Shaykh is saying here that this is a qaid, a rule. This is a command from Allah to the Prophet ﷺ. But whatever Allah has commanded his Prophet ﷺ with it, then this is also a command for his Ummah. With what condition? That there's no proof showing. That is not general for the Ummah. Rather, it's exclusive for the Prophet ﷺ. If it's not from that which is, yani mukhassas, for the Prophet ﷺ, then it's for the whole of the Muslim Ummah. And the Shaykh says, and there's no proof that this is exclusively, yani for the Prophet ﷺ alone, by agreement of the scholars of Ahlul Ilm. There is agreement that this is not exclusively for the Prophet, rather it's for the whole of the Ummah. Here I just want to mention a point. Yani this is a qaid, a principle, right? Whatever Allah has commanded the Prophet with, then it's a command for the whole Ummah, unless there's a proof of otherwise. 
There's another principle that's applicable here. That Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'adi rahimahullah mentions in this ayat. He said, وَلَأَمْرُ بِشَيْءِ أَمْرٌ بِجَمِيعِ مَا لَا يَتُمُّ إِلَّا بِهِ فَيَكُونُ أَمْرًا بِتَعَلِيمِهِمْ مَا يُصْلِحْ مَا يُصْلِحْ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُفْصِدُهَا وَيُكْمِلُهَا يعني وَلَأَمْرُ بِشَيْءِ The command with something is a command for everything that that command cannot be fulfilled except with those other things. Everything else that's necessary, if, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to order our families with salah, that is an order, not only just to tell them to make salah, but everything else that's necessary in order to fulfill that. That means teaching them about the salah, and what it requires, what makes it correct, what spoils it, what corrupts it, what makes it defective, and so on. What makes it complete and perfect. So it's not just a matter of you have fulfilled your duty, I ordered them to pray. If they prayed or didn't pray, if they knew how to pray or didn't know how to pray, that's their problem. No, that's your problem. Because that's part of the command. The command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to order your family to pray, means that you have to teach them how to pray. And show them how to pray and facilitate the matter for them. So this is also an important principle. Because some of us, we don't teach our families. And we don't facilitate a way for them to learn. But we just leave them on their own. Just do the best you can. No, that's your responsibility. Your wives and your children are your responsibility. You have to make a way for them to learn. You have to learn yourself and you also have to look at them. The Shaykh says, So it is obligatory upon every father and everyone who is responsible for the affair of someone else to give attention to his children, yani to his sons, but I mean it's general for children, yani to give great care to them and to follow up Yani with meticulous follow-up in this affair of salat. Yani don't you just told them to pray, you gave them a book. No, you're supposed to attend to this matter. And you're supposed to follow up on it, make sure that they're learning. What did you learn? Did you do this? Did you learn this? Do you know this? You have to follow up on it. That's your responsibility. Yani this affair of the salat, to follow up on it, to give care to it, to give attention to it, to give importance to it. This a matter which is the greatest of the pillars of Islam after the shahadatain. The shaykh says, and this is critical here, بعد أن يكون هو في نفسه محافظا عليها يعني this, commanding your family, and joining them, educating them, following up on the matter, is after you have first attended to your own self. That you are guarding the prayer, giving attention to the prayer, patient and persevering, in the establishment of the prayer. So that he, the, the father, the wali al-amr, the person who is responsible for the affair of someone, so that he will be a qudwa, an example, a model for his children. So you have to not only tell them what to do, but you got to show them the example. You have to be an example. Some parents, it's sufficient for them to tell their children, go to the masjid and pray. And they don't go to the masjid and pray. Some of them, they take them to the masjid, and leave them and come back later for them. Some of them sit outside the masjid waiting for their children to come out. And it's time for salat. They don't go in and pray. Allah, this is happening right now in New York City. And I'm not the only one who knows about it. <laughs> Somebody else must have seen this. This is what's going on. You know about it, right? <laughs> now, this is what's going on, brother. Some children are being dumped in the masjid and their parents are not doing anything themselves. What kind of example is that? So, <coughs> he must follow up with this and he must encourage them and urge them to perform the salat and to guard the salat as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with that. Here the shaykh says, and this noble ayat indicates or points to two great, tremendous, important responsibilities. Maqamain azimain. Two great responsibilities that must be realized, that must be achieved. This ayat points to two responsibilities. On the surface, it might appear as though it's a command that you order your family to pray. But after that he said what? وَاسْتَبِرْ alayha, And you also must be patient in the fulfillment of the prayer. So there are two responsibilities here. Two great responsibilities. First of them is that the person gives care to his own self in guarding and protecting and preserving the salat and being patient and persevering in fulfilling this obligation. That's the first great responsibility on yourself. 
And that is because there are in this life many things that occupy the people, that turn them away, and that are obstructions busying many of the people from the performance of this Salat and protecting and preserving and guarding the Salat in its time. There are many things that what? Are occupying the people, distracting the people, impediments and obstructions that prevent the person who knows that it's obligatory to perform the Salat from doing it in its time or doing it at all. And that is, <coughs> he said, and so, so there's one, that's one, he is busy from his Salat by sleep. Sleeps past the Salat, especially Fajr prayer or something like that. And another one, he's busy due to laziness. Just pure laziness. Too lazy to get up and go to the masjid and pray. And it's not only men. It could be women too. Maybe they don't have to go to the masjid, but they got to get up and pray. Five times a day. And a third one is busy by lahu. Yani by some amusement. Entertainment. Some, yani baseless, useless engagement. And that which is similar to this. So those things which, yani busy us, are many. And this station, this position, this responsibility is a responsibility that requires per- patient perseverance. And it requires that we, yani, uh, follow up on it until we become from the people of Salat. Yani the people who protect and preserve the Salat. And this is a responsibility that not everyone is able to remain firm upon it because of the need to be consistent, to be continuous without becoming weary or exhausted, without becoming yani, bored with fulfilling this Salat five times a day. It requires that a person Yani, be consistent. Al Hafiz ibn Kathir, I mean Al Hafiz ibn Hajj al Askalani, Rahimahullah, he says in the explanation of this hadith, yani, another hadith, Ayyu Amal, Ahabu ilallah, which deed is most beloved to Allah? The Prophet said, As Salat ala waqtiha, performing the prayer in its time, its proper time. Then what is next? Most beloved by Allah, he said, being kind, dutiful to your parents, your mother and father. Al Hafiz ibn Hajar rahimahullah says in reference to this hadith, yani this is what is most beloved to Allah, except that being patient in, in, in guarding and protecting these prayers and performing them in their times and being yani, consistent and protecting and preserving the rights, the du- being dutiful to parents, this is a, an affair that is obligatory, but it is repeated, and it is constant, and yani, not everyone is able to be patient, or perseverant, and consistent, in yani, observing the command of Allah, except those in this affair, except those who are the truthful. Yani, not everyone is able to be consistent, and constant, in attending to this matter, the way it's supposed to be, except as siddiqoon those who are truthful, really truthful, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just in speech, but in the action, in the behavior, in the aqidah, and everything. This is the first of the two great responsibilities. The responsibility for oneself in protecting and guarding the prayer and being patient in its performance and doing it in its time and properly and so on. The second of these matters is giving care to whoever from your family or your children is under your responsibility by yani, disciplining them in order to make them to protect and preserve the Salat and to give care to the Salat and then following up on them in this great matter. Yani the second matter is what? Yani disciplining, Nam, even disciplining your family if it is necessary in order to make sure that they fulfill this obligation and give attention and care to it. And this meaning, yani the meaning of this noble ayat that we mentioned and order your family to perform the prayer and be patient upon it yourself this meaning has come in a hadith narrated by Abu Dawood in his Sunan from the hadith of Abdul ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Muru awladakum bis salat Command your children 
to perform the salat. وَهُمْ أَبْنَاءُ سَبْعِ سَنِينَ While they are seven years old. When they reach the age of seven, you must command them, order them to start praying. وَدْرِبُوهُمْ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ أَبْنَاءُ عَشْرٍ And beat them if necessary. And what kind of beating does it mean? Brutalize them? Break their, break their nose? Bust their jaw? Break their legs? No, it means and he spank them. And in a way that they understand that they have, that you're not pleased with them. It's a means of discipline. Now, beat them. What do them? Doesn't mean brutalize them. Because this is not Islamic anyway. Beat them. Discipline them by even physical beating. Yani, to a limit that's necessary in order to make them understand the seriousness of the matter when they reach ten. And when they seven, begin to order them to pray when they reach ten, then you have to discipline them if they don't pray. You have to take the serious measure to make sure that they pray. Because if you don't do that, in the proper way, then what happened, these children will be lost. They don't know any better at that age. So it's upon you to train them, to follow them up, to encourage them, to do whatever is necessary to facilitate the matter until they understand the importance of it. And inshallah, Allah put in their heart a desire to fulfill that duty. Otherwise, your children will grow up and eventually you'll be wondering what happened, why they left Islam. Allah, look at how many of our children have left Islam. They are unlimited in number. Wallahu musta'an. And part of that is because of what? We haven't given the care that they need when they were children. We didn't give them the care. And if we did, then that's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one, His perfect wisdom and justice that decrees whatever He wills. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَهُمْ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ And separate them in the beds. Yani when they reach ten, don't allow boy, boys and girls to sleep in the bed together. The Shaykh, he says after this hadith, this is a follow-up, yani giving care and following up on your children in reference to the matter of the salat in your family, that must be yani muta'akkida, yani mutabi'a muta'akkida. You must be certain about this. Yani at this early age, you must give care to your children at this early time in their life. So from the time when they are seven years old, they should be commanded with salat, and they should be encouraged. Yani, they, you should give them encouragement to make to attra- make the salat, the performance of salat, attractive to them. And when they reach ten, if they are falling short, they are negligent in the salat, or they abandon it, or they let it be wasted or lost, then they should be disciplined by beating. What kind of beating? Darb ta'dib. Yani, a beating that's for discipline, just to make them understand the seriousness of the matter and that you're not pleased with this. This is not the beating of itlaf, where you actually break their bones and kill them and stuff like this. This is not what this means. Indeed, this station, this position, this yani, duty of the salat, it is a great, great responsibility. So if anyone was to look and reflect, yani, the one who would look and the one who reflect will reflect upon the, the actual condition of the houses, the families of many of the people, we will find that many of them Yani al tafrit fil ghalib. Yani that this falling short or negligence, most of the time it came from the fathers. When you looked at where it got messed up at, most of the time it came from the fathers. So the father he himself was wasting away, falling short, negligent in this obligation. So he was not an example for his sons in preserving the salat. So they, those who were under him, were raised up, and his children and others who were under him, they raised up, falling short, wasting away, neglecting the salat. So the children, they are raised upon what their fathers raised them upon. <laughs> and there is no sin, crime, that a father commits against his children, like the sin of neglecting this matter of salat. There is no sin that a father, a crime that a father has committed against his children, like neglecting the salat. Just think about that. Naam. So this crime is a tremendous crime. Reflect upon the speech of Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah. He specifically mentioned the fathers in this great matter. And he said, rahimahullah, so whoever has neglected, yani, disregarded, overlooked, teaching his son that which will benefit them, and he left them to go on their own, then he has done a tremendous evil. Yani the utmost evil thing that one can do. And most of the children, their corruption came from the direction of their fathers. 
who have neglected them and left them yani he has he has failed to teach them the obligatory duties of this deen and its yani sunan so he has allowed them to be lost when they were young so they didn't benefit for themselves and they didn't benefit their fathers when their fathers get old yani the children were left abandoned so they didn't benefit the children didn't benefit themselves nor when their parents got old they didn't give them any benefit how how can they benefit with you I mean, how can they benefit you so this is a very dangerous matter it requires from the father to be the first one yani who who yani is sincere to his own self and then he is sincere to those who are under him from his family and his children and that he disciplines them in reference to the salat and he calls them yani to protect and preserve the salat and give care to it so the shaykh he says o oh, son al ibn al muwaffaq yani the son who has been granted success yani who has been raised properly if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored you with a father who gave care to you in this matter of salat encouraged you upon it and yani enjoined it upon you and, and gave you yani every facility to do it then you should be warned from feeling like you are harassed or you are troubled or you are disturbed from your father you are irritated or annoyed from your father following up on this matter giving attention and care to you for indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed wallahi he said your father has yani he saved you from the anger of allah and the wrath of allah and he has yani done that which would enable you to reach the pleasure of allah tbarak wa ta'ala indeed allah jalla wa ala is not allah is not pleased with you except if you are from the people of this salat those who protect and guard and preserve the salat and fulfill this duty ponder over this great station and the praise of allah yani the exalted praise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his prophet ismail alayhi salatu wasalam the saying of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah maryam 19th surah 55th ayat wa kana ya'mur ahlahu bis salati waz zakati wa kana inda rabbihi mardiya that he used to yani ismail alayhi salatu wasalam he used to command his family with salat and zakat and he was pleasing pleasing to his rabb yani because of him fulfilling the duties that allah has placed upon him he was pleasing in the presence of his lord in the presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is because he has taken the means through which a person can achieve the, pres- the pleasure of allah and the greatest of that is giving ter- care to the salat and protecting and preserving and guarding the salat and disciplining one's family and teaching and training them in this matter yani protecting and preserving the salat yani how did he earn the pleasure of his rabb by utilizing the means through which a person attains allah's pleasure it has been narrated from al imam malik in his muwatta from zaid ibn aslam from his father radiyallahu anhu that umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu رضي الله عنه كان يصلي من الليل ما شاء الله حتى اذا كان من اخر الليل ايقظ اهله للصلاه يقول لهم الصلاه الصلاه ثم يتلو هذه الايه وامر اهلك بالصلاه واصطبر عليها لا نسالك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبه للتقوى يعني ذات عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه he used to pray in the night as much as allah willed يعني he used to get up and pray to hajj as much as allah willed When he came to the end of the night he would wake up his family for salat and he would say to them as salat as salat yani get up for the prayer and then he would recite this ayat where Allah has commanded us to command our families with salat and for ourselves to be patient upon it so look at con- yani consider reflect upon the condition of as salaf as sali may Allah have mercy upon him and may Allah be pleased with them yani in reference to this tawjih rabbani azim this great tremendous divine instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then reflect upon the actual condition of many of the people in falling short and neglecting and wasting away 
يعني this obligation of salat and their failure يعني to fulfill it to fulfill this tremendous obligation and you look at how the salaf were the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and those who came after them and look at how the people are today the shaykh he closes here by saying so oh how much we are in need of this very great magnificent yani, matter this affair oh how much we are in need فَمَا أَحْوَجَنَا we, There's nothing that we could be more in need of than that we be in our own selves those who guard and protect and preserve the salat and then that we follow up on our children in their performance of the salat. Oh how much we are in need, the shaykh said, of being truthful, sincere in al-iltija إِلَى اللَّهِ yani, Turning to Allah, seeking refuge in Allah. How much are we in need of sincerely turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Asking Him to make us and our children from the people of Salat. The people who guard and protect and preserve the Salat. We are in need of sincere dua turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He, that he make us of those people of Salat and that we make our children and our family of the people of Salat. And from the greatest dua in reference to this matter is the dua of Ibrahim al-Khalil alayhi salatu wasalam which is mentioned in, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ibrahim, 14th Surah, 40th Ayat, رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي O Allah, make me مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ One of those who established the Salat وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي And also my offspring رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا O Allah, accept my dua, my supplication. We ask Allah Jalla fi alahu that he grant us success, all of us are being those who protect and preserve the salat, and that he rectify our children, and that he make us and them from those who are, yani, who establish the salat. That he make us and them to be from those who establish the salat. And we still have a few minutes remaining, inshallah, and this, the second topic is relatively short, so we'll finish it, inshallah, in a few minutes. Second topic is. Indeed, the salat is made obligatory, yani enjoined upon the believers at fixed times. This is the sixth chapter, yani the obligation of performing the salat in its fixed times. The shaykh, he begins by saying, As-salat mizan al-iman. Yani the salat is the scale, the measuring instrument that measures a person's iman. A person wants to know what kind of iman they have, they can measure it by salat. Yani how much care and concern do you have for your salat? This is a this is a true measuring stick of your iman. You claim you have real iman, strong iman, huh? Look at your salat. It will tell on you. For you or against you. So depending on a person, the iman of a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will determine how their salat will be, if it will be complete and perfect. And from this is performing it, yani examining our salat from the things that we will look at to examine our salat is the performance of the salat in its yani, specified times particular hours that have been yani, designated for the salat Allah wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa 4th Surah 103rd Ayat 4th Surah 103rd Ayat إِنَّ salata كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Indeed the salat has been yani, enjoined upon the believers at fixed times, mawquta, special times, not when you get ready to as you like. This ayat is crystal clear. Inna salata kanat ala al mu'minina upon the believers, the people of Iman, kitaban, yani ordained, enjoined, prescribed, made obligatory, mawqutan, at fixed times, at a specific waqt, not when you feel like it. And in the Sahih of Muslim, from the hadith of Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Salli as-salata li waqtiha. Salli as-salata li waqtiha. This is the command. Salli, command, perform the salat in its time. The time that it has been prescribed for it. So with the entry of the time, the entry of the time, it is a shart li wujub as-salat. It is a precondition that makes the salat obligatory. When the time for the salat enters, it becomes obligatory. And it's also a shart, a shart li sihatiha. And it is also a precondition for the correctness of the salat. Yani, the entry of the time makes it obligatory 
It's not obligatory. It's a precondition. It becomes obligatory when the time comes. And it is also that you perform it within his time and not ahead of his time is a, con- a precondition for the validity, the correctness of the salah. If you perform it ahead of his time, it's not valid. So it is not obligatory until its time comes. And it is not correct, valid, except that its time has come. And these are, yani, blessed, great times that have come, yani, that have been indirectly indicated to us in many places in the book of Allah and it has come to us crystal clear in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in what he said and in what he did in his speech and in his actions he has made a clarification that is sufficient and it has been transmitted yani the Muslims have transmitted from the Prophet ﷺ and received it these times specific clear indications of his times from the Prophet ﷺ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran an indication in the Quran of times of salah and these ayats yani, require some tafsir and we don't really have a lot of time but the first ayat that the Shaykh mentioned in surah is surah al-Isra Isra, 17th surah, 78th ayat aqim salata li duluq al-shamsi ila ghasaq al-layli wa Qur'an al-fajri inna Qur'an al-fajri kana mashhuda yani establish the salat li duluq al-shams ibn Abbas said duluq al-shams means zawal al-shams Yani establish the salah when the sun begins to decline. That's the time for dhuhr. إِلَى غَسَقَ layl Until the darkness of the night. That is from dhuhr until the darkness of the night means what? Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ And the recitation of Qur'an al-Fajr. Indeed, the recitation of Qur'an al-Fajr is witnessed by the angels. The angels of the night and the angels of the day. And this ayat is an indirect indication to what? The five prayers of the day. Yani from the declining of the sun until the darkness of the night includes Dhu and Asr and Maghrib and Isha as some of the scholars of Tafsir said and the Quran al-Fajr is in reference to the Fajr Salat that is witnessed by the angels of the night and the angels of the day exchanging places Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah said so based on this this ayat is included in it the times of the five Prayers are included in this ayat, Ibn Kathir says. The Shaykh also mentions another ayat, and there are a lot of ayats in the Quran similar to these. He mentions also from Surah to Rum, 30th Surah, 17th and 18th ayat. Another indirect indication to the times of prayer, according to some of the scholars, there's a difference of opinion about it. But Al Imam Shawkani says that this, what is intended by this, these two ayats, what is intended by it is. Uh, the salawat al-khams the five prayers what is intended by this ayat that we are about to recite now Imam al-Shawkani Allah says it means the five prayers فَسُبْحَانَ hina tumsuna wa hina tusbihun. so glorify and praise Allah when? in the evening yani some of the scholars said this means the Maghrib and Isha prayer and in the morning yani hina tusbihun means the Fajr prayer وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to him, yani Allah is the one, all the praise belongs to him due to his actions and his characteristics and his perfect descriptions and so on and the blessings and favors that he has given to us. لَهُ الْحَمْدِ To him is due the praise فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ In the heavens and the earth وَعَشِيًّا وَهِنَا تُذْهِرُونَ وَعَشِيًّا Al-Imam al-Shawkani said عَشِيًّا means the Asa prayer وَهِنَا تُذْهِرُونَ means the time of ظهر تُذْهِرُونَ يعني ظهر So he's saying here that what? Hina tum suna means the evening, Maghrib Isha prayer. Wa tusbihuna means the Fajr prayer, and any morning the Fajr prayer. Wa ashiyan means the Asr prayer. Wa hina tuzhirun means the Zuhr prayer. It has also been narrated by Abu Dawud and the Tirmidhi and Ahmed and other than them from the hadith of Abdul ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith we mentioned previously in one of the earlier chapters, so we just go through it quickly, he said. That the angel Jibreel alayhi salam has led me in prayer. Ammani Jibreel alayhi salam and al bayti marrataini. That the angel Jibreel led him in prayer at the bait, at the Kaaba two times. And in the first day he showed him the time, the beginning of the time for each prayer, and the second day, the end of the time for each prayer. And those times are specified in this hadith. He said he led me in the Dhuha prayer at the time when the sun began to decline just a little bit. The amount of the strap that's in the sandal. Small amount when it began to decline a little bit. That's the beginning of Dhuha time. And he led me in the Asa prayer at the time when the shadow of a thing is equal to it. That's on the first day. And he led me in the Maghrib prayer at the time when the fasting person breaks their fast. 
And he let me in the Isha prayer at the time when the darkness, a shafaq, has disappeared from the sky. Yani the redness that's in the sky after the sunset, when it's completely gone, this is the time of, the beginning of the time of Isha. And he let me in the Fajr prayer at the time when the fasting person is prohibited from eating and drinking at the break of dawn. And then when it was the second day, he let me in the prayer second day. And in the second day, he showed him the end of the time for each prayer. He said, he let me in the Doha prayer at the time when the shadow of a thing is equal to itself. On the first day, that was the time of Asr. On the second day, he let him in the Doha prayer at that time, meaning that was the end of the time for Doha and the beginning of the time for Asr. And he let me in the Asr prayer at the time when the shadow of a thing is twice, is equal to twice it. Yani when the, length, when the shadow of a thing is equal to twice its length. And that's the end of the time of the Asr prayer, or its preferred time. And he let me in the Maghrib prayer, he said, at the same time as on the first day, that is, at the time when the fasting person breaks his fast, and he let me in the Isha prayer up to one third of the night. And in the beginning of the time for Isha prayer is when the red glow the, from the sunset is completely gone. That's the beginning of the time of Isha, and the end of the preferred time of Isha is one third of the night. And he said he let me in the Fajr prayer for Asfara, yani when it became bright, yani when the sky became bright, yani after the sun has risen, sky be, sky became bright before, yani before sunrise, before sunrise. And when the sky becomes bright from dawn, when the sun is coming up in the sky before it rises above the horizon, it gets brighter and brighter. And that was the end of the time for Fajr before it actually breaks the horizon. And then he looked at me and he said, Ya Muhammad, hadha waqtul anbiya min qablika. O Muhammad, this is the time of the prophets from before you. These, this is the time that the prophets before you, they used to pray their five prayers at the same times. Wal waqtu ma bayna hadhaini al waqtaini. So the prayer for the the time for the prayer is in between these two times. In between the, the time he prayed on the first day and the second day, these are the boundaries of each prayer. And these, these times are very clear. They are crystal clear. They are apparent. They are well known to the person who is resident and the person who is out in the desert. And when the time for this prayer comes, then the call is announced from the masjids of the Muslims. And to announce to the people that the time for the prayer has come, and the Mu'adhan, Mu'adhan al-Rahman, the one who's called, the caller for al-Rahman, he calls out to the people saying, Hayya al-Salah, Hayya al-Falah. Come to prayer, come to success. And if success in the next life, it is based upon this Salat. And then the Shaykh mentions the Mathal, a yani, little bit. When the Sabah, Yahmadu al-Qawm al-Surah, wa fil mamati, Yahmadu al-Abdu al-Tuqa. And it means something like, and in the morning, the people will praise the one who traveled in the night. And at the time of death, the servant will praise yani, yani the one who had taqwa. And it could have a number of different meanings. Yani, that the people who traveled in the night will be praised. When they reach their destination by traveling all night, they will be, pra- they will be praising the fact that they traveled in the night instead of sleeping. And the people who slept will also recognize that these people have accomplished their goal while we were sleeping. So they will also praise them. And at the time of death, the person will be praised who had observed taqwa in his lifetime and he will also himself be pleased with himself that he observed taqwa. And he, after the fact, the person who has, who has striven and strove and made the effort, inshallah, they will be praised by the other people who recognize that these people have accomplished. And they will also be pleased with themselves and Allah knows best. So reflect upon, and the Shaykh says after this, reflect, and he, what does this mean? This means that Yani, subhanAllah, perhaps right now it may feel difficult to travel in the night. You'd rather be sleeping. But traveling in the night will be the best way to reach your destination. So even though it may be difficult, get up in the night and pray to your Lord. At least pray to Raqqa. Even though it may be difficult, give some charity even if you only have a little bit of money. It may be difficult, but tell the truth even if it's against your own self. Naam. Because in the end, Wallahi, the people will praise you. And you will also be pleased with yourself that you have done what is right. But otherwise, if you don't do it, you will be in loss. Let's reflect upon the saying of Jibreel alayhi salam in this hadith. He said, Hada waqt al anbiya min qabl. This is the time of the prophets before you. This is the time when they used to pray the five prayers that they all the prophets before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And by this we come to know, yani these, um, yani hadhi al awqat al khams al isra, yani naam. Uh, these are the times for the five prayers, the times for the salat. This is the time that it was for the prophets, even before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi This is the time that all the prophets used to pray. And from this is also an indication of the greatness, the magnificence of the status of these times. Yani the lofty position of these times of the prayer. 
Yani the times that we are praying, all the prophets used to pray at the same time as this. How can you neglect this? This is not just something put together haphazardly. All the prophets, from the first of them until the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these are the times they used to pray. Same times we are praying. This shows the magnitude of these, the, 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 yani the loftiness, the excellence, the majesty of the times that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has legislated for us to pray. All the prophets before even prayed at the same times. And that these times, in these times, the sleeping person has to get up. And the working person has to stop working. And the one who is unmindful has to be reminded. And all of them have to turn towards the houses of Allah. That's specifically to the men. Have to turn towards the houses of Allah. Praying in jama'ah. The houses of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. To perform these prayers in their times. That have been, yani specific times that have been specified. And we close with these few evidences and proofs. The Shaykh mentions performing these prayers in their time. That's our topic, second topic, right? Performing the prayers in their times. The Shaykh mentions four evidences here. The first evidence is what was mentioned by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, the great Khalifa of the Muslims who was upon the Sunnah. He was a scholar of the people of Sunnah. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Rahimahullah. He, it is said that the saying of Allah Tabarak Ta'ala from Surah to Maryam, 19th Surah, 59th Ayat, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ yani A posterity, the later generation of them, they came after the previous people, and this later generation, أَضَعُوا salat They neglected the Salat. وَاتَّبَوا الشَّهَوَات And they followed the desires. فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ so they will soon be thrown into the hellfire. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz read this ayat and then he said, لَمْ تَكُنْ عِضَاعَتُهُمْ تَرْكَهَا وَلَكِنْ أَضَاوَ الْوَقْتِ لَمْ تَكُنْ عِضَاعَتُهُمْ تَرْكَهَا They are abandoning, neglecting the salat. wasn't that they tark, they left the salat. They didn't pray at all. وَلَكِنْ أَضَاوَ الْوَقْتِ Yani what they had abandoned, what they neglected was performing the prayer in time. He said that the meaning, this is one of the meaning of this ayat. Yani the meaning of this ayat, Allah was salat, wa tabu was shahwat, means they neglected the salat. Some of them, they neglected it, meaning they didn't pray at all. Some of them, they neglected it, meaning this meaning, that they didn't perform it in its time. And some of them, they may have even performed it in a time, but they didn't perform it properly. Some people, they're going to the masjid, performing the prayer on time, but look how they pray. This is also a da'at to salat. This is also neglecting, wasting away the salat. But Umar al Aziz said, they neglected the salat, it means what? It wasn't that they neglect, they abandoned the salat, but it was that they didn't perform it in its time. And the second evidence he mentions from Surah to Ma'un, 108th Surah, 4th and 5th Ayat. 108th Surah, 4th and 5th Ayat. And this Ayat is more clear than the first one. فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ سَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ سَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ So woe to those people who pray, but they are of those who, what? Yani, they, they neglected their prayer. Yani, they neglected their prayer. They didn't perform it in its time. Yani, عَنْ سَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ They are unmindful, neglectful of their prayer. And here, Abdullah ibn Abbas, رضي الله عنهما, he said, الَّذِينَ هم عن صلاتهم ساهون يعني those who are يعني neglectful of their salah it means الذين يؤخرون الصلاة عن وقتها الذين يؤخرون الصلاة عن وقتها those who have delayed the prayer beyond its time they prayed it but they didn't pray it on time indeed delaying the prayer from its time is a matter that is جد خطير extremely dangerous huh? some people think well I prayed anyway they came home at the end of the day and prayed Dhu'a, Asa, Maghrib, and Isha. This matter of delaying the Salat is extremely dangerous. And it is one of the indications of Riqqat al-Deen. That a person's Deen is fragile. The Deen is what? Fragile. It can break easily. Be destroyed. Khalas. It doesn't have any strength. It's not solid. And it has come to us from the Prophet ﷺ in many hadith warning the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning them against yani, neglecting the times of the prayers. And this matter is a matter yani, that is lengthy. 
to mention all the hadith related to it, but the Shaykh only mentions two of them, and this is what we'll close with. Both of these hadith are narrated by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. And the first of them is the hadith of Abdul ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah. May Allah be pleased with him and his father that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And this is extreme, extreme, yani severe, yani warning to the people about yani neglecting the performance of the prayers in their time. مَنْ فَاتَتْهُ الْعَصْرُ فَكَأَنَّمَا وُطِرَ أَحْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ مَنْ فَاتَتْهُ الْعَصْرُ يعني the person who the asr got past him he didn't perform in his time the asr time is finished it's mother he didn't pray yet مَنْ فَاتَتْهُ الْعَصْرُ فَكَأَنَّمَا وُطِرَ أَحْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ it is as though he has lost his family and his wealth what a, what a loss after that man lost his family and his wealth what he got left Is the, asr, the, is the asr important to us like that? <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who allowed the asr prayer time to go by, is as though you have forfeited your family, your wife and your children, and all your property. This hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim. So it, as though, it is as though this person has given up his family and his wealth. So he remained without family or wealth. So be warned against falling short and abandoning, neglecting, yani. The same way that you would take precautions in protecting and preserving your wealth and your family from being lost or getting away from you. This is the way you should be warned and take precautions in reference to guarding the time of the Asa prayer and the prayers in general, but especially the Asa prayer. And the last hadith that the Shaykh mentions also reported by Imam Muslim in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu said in reference to the Maghrib Salat. And how many people abandon the Maghrib Salat? And the time for Maghrib is very short. Well, it's not like as they're doing the prayer calendars, right? And the prayer calendar, maybe the time for Maghrib is up until Isha, and Isha is an hour and a half later. Maghrib is long gone before that. It's dark outside, pitch dark, long before that time. Some people think they can wait until Isha, they'll pray Maghrib just before Isha. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith narrated by Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, Tilka salatul munafiq. This is the salat of who? The munafiq. Munafiq is a kafir who's pretending to be a Muslim. This salat is the salat of the munafiq. Yajlisu yarqubu ash-shamsa. He sits, he's watching the sun. I have plenty of time left. It's another 15 minutes before the time is out. <laughs> another 10 minutes. Still got enough time. All I need is about 60 seconds. I can do this thing. Yajlisu yarqubu ash He monitors the sun. He sits monitoring the sun, just watching it. حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَتْ بَيْنَ قَرْنِ الشَّيْطَانِ قَامَ فَنَقَرَهَا أَرْبَعًا Until when? إِذَا كَانَتْ بَيْنَ قَرْنِ الشَّيْطَانِ Yani when the sun is between the two horns of shaytan. Yani about to set. That's why we don't pray at sunset time. Because the sun is between the horns of shaytan. This is the time of the mushrikeen. The sun worshippers. That's when they pray. So he waits until that moment. قَامَ فَنَقَرَهَا أَرْبَعًا Then he gets up and he just pecks through four rakah. Like the bird going up and down, pecking, picking up some seeds. Pecking. This is how he performs it. A brother was praying two rakah in the masjid. Another brother came in and prayed four rakah before he finished two rakah. And the four rakah that he prayed was in fajr time. Is there four rakah for fajr? Two rakah, sunnah, two rakah. He's praying four rakah, sunnah, two rakah, two more rakah. The other brother didn't finish the first two rakah yet. What was he rushing to? He still got to wait for the imam until it's time for the ikama. What kind of prayer is this? This is the prayer that people pray normally. A lot of people pray like this. Some of us, well, lie. Some of us probably, we, I mean, who which of us we didn't fall into that sometimes? Sometimes you're neglectful, you're not really paying attention, you're just in a hurry or something, and you're just praying. Well, lie. if you was really to monitor yourself and see yourself praying like that, you'd be ashamed to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that kind of condition. He said, he, wa- he waits until he sees the sun setting between the horns of shaitan and then he stands up and he, yani, pecks through them. Naqaraha arba'an. Four quick raka. La yadhkurullaha fiha illa qalila. And he doesn't mention Allah in them except a little. He doesn't mention Allah in them. How much can you, how much can you remember Allah in that kind of salat? Yani, can you actually reflect even one time saying, Subhana Rabbi al Azim? Even one time in that prayer like that, Allah, you can't even say it one time. Forget about three times. 
Subhana Rabbi Al-Ala Is the person able to reflect upon the meaning of this sentence in that kind of prayer? What are you saying when you recite tash- Tashahud? Wallahi, some people make Tashahud. I don't know what they're saying. They couldn't even finish the first part of it, let alone the second part, let alone Salat ala Nabi Sallallahu or any other seeking refuge from four or whatever. They couldn't say anything in it. لا يذكر الله فيها إلا قليلا Perhaps the opening supplication after the takbir of al-ihram, they didn't even say it. Maybe al-fatiha, they just said, I think some, I heard that some people were doing that. I don't know if it's really, maybe it's not true, I, I can't say that. But it seems as though, some people when they pray, they just say, Allahu Akbar, al-fatiha. Allahu Akbar, they make ruku. <laughs> they don't make al-fatiha. No, wait a minute, hold on. Okay, I don't mean, it's not, it's not like that. This is serious. A lot of some people are praying like that. I see it every day. I see it every day. I go in the masjid near my house and I see people coming and pray. Unbelievable. What kind of prayer is this? It's not possible you can recite Al-Fatiha that fast. If you did say it, the way you said it, you can't remember Allah. That's not a Al-Fatiha where you remember Allah. Where well, you're reflecting upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah. Great words. Tremendous words. Just think about them and what they mean. So where's the reflection? This is the prayer of who? Tilka Salatul Munafiq. This is the salat of the munafiq. This is something for us to think about now. What kind of prayer are we praying? The prayer of the munafiq or the prayer of the mu'min? Five times a day, at least, obligatory prayers and even our sunnah prayers. The person has to give care to them. And I'm saying to myself first and foremost. I have to. I have to say to myself first and foremost. And every one of us. I'm saying it to you also. Have you done any better since last week? Do you feel that you are more conscious of your prayer? Are you thinking about the importance of this salat to the extent that you actually are standing in front of Allah like it has importance? Like it's going to determine whether or not in the next standing you're going to be in the hellfire or you're going to be in a position that's pleasing to your Rabb. I mean, you have to ask yourself. You have to like keep a record. You have to monitor your situation. Give yourself a score. I mean, what would you give yourself if you were honest knowing that Allah is a witness and the angels are recording of your prayers since the last time we sat here last week? How, how, what kind of score will you give yourself in comparison to the week before? Do you get a higher score this week? Or do you get a lower score? Or are you just doing the same thing? You're content. You're content. You're content with your situation. Wallah, if you're content with your situation, may Allah make us free from you. May Allah save us from this condition of being content. The one who is content, Wallah, he's not listening to this. Maybe he's just sitting here. Or she's just sitting here. If you are here, but you're not really paying it any mind because you're still praying the same way. That's the point. Can you give your, honestly in front of Allah, can you give yourself a better score this week than last week? Have you done better? If you haven't, then, I mean, if, we, if Allah didn't take our life here, there's a chance to do better today. And this is a reminder to myself first. And we have to do better every day, every salah. You have to do better. If you don't do better, then what are you headed for? And the Shaykh says that the hadith concerning this matter, there are many. So what? فَكَيْفَ شَعْنُنَا مَا هَذَا salat? So what, how are we? What is our affair with this salat? What is our condition with this salat? What is the extent of our pr- pr- preserving, protecting and guarding its times? What is the extent of how, to what extent do we go to perform the prayer in its times? Especially the brothers. In jama'ah, in the masjid, at the time of the adhan and ikamah. Now with the second jama'ah and the third jama'ah and the fourth jama'ah. With the jama'ah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa established. The only jama'ah. The one that's with the imam at the time of the adhan and ikamah. So let us take account of ourselves. Before Allah takes account of us. And let us weigh our deeds. Before they are weighed. On the day when we meet him. Oh Allah make us. All of us. The Shaykh said, Ajma'in, all of us, Minan al Muqeemin al Salat, from those who established the Salat. Wawafakana, wudurriyatana li dalik, and grant us success, and also our offspring, Ya Rabb al Alameen. Ya Rabb al Alameen. Anyway, I guess our time is up. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك. And I say again to myself first and to all of us. يعني I'm talking to myself first. 
we have to do better. And this salah is a critical matter. If we can't do better with this, we know from what we heard before that the person whose salat is performed well, this will be the determining factor. Not only will their salat be accepted, but the rest of their deeds will also be accepted. إِذَا قُبِلَتْ The salat. قُبِلَ سَعْرُ عَمَلِهِ وَإِذَا رُدَّتْ صَلَاتُهُ رُدَّ عَلَيْهِ سَعْرُ عَمَلِهِ The person whose salat is accepted, the rest of their deeds will be accepted. And the person whose salat is rejected, the rest of their deeds will be rejected. This is the critical point. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهدوا لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك